Hey guys, Ray from Love Your RV back with you again. So uh, in a previous video, I installed something called the Screenshot on my screen door, which is an automatic screen door closer. And I had uh, told you I was going to be also installing something called a friction hinge onto my RV door. I had never really heard of these before. And when I was looking through some of the products I'd like to review for Lippert, <clears throat> it was kind of on my list, mainly because it said keeps entry door open in winds up to 25 miles an hour. Um, one thing I notice when we're in windy conditions, like say down in the U.S. Southwest, you'll get big gusts come through and almost rips rips and Ann's arm off when the when it hits the door. It can be really hard to open the door and close the door, and the thing flies back and slams into the the Cougar sidewall. So I thought hmm, this might be worth worth installing. Now, when I mentioned it, I got quite a few comments. People either loved them or hated them, or had never heard of them. I guess they're putting them OEM on a lot of new rigs. They come already pre-installed and a lot of people are having problems with them. Seems to be one of the major things is they get sticky. Another thing is sometimes they, they get so hard to close they actually bend the door, um, kind of put force on the door. And I even had one guy who showed these little pins here, it kind of backed out and kind of ripped the door. So a lot of people are removing them and putting just normal hinges in. Anyway, I was going to install, these are the aftermarket ones, they're not the OEM. The OEM you would have three hinges and two of them would be the friction hinge and the center would be just a normal hinge. In the aftermarket situation, you'd leave your three hinges in place and then in between you would install the friction hinges so you'd actually have five hinges. So that's what the, the thing looks like, but unfortunately, even though it kind of says here can be installed on any Lippert entry door series as well as most Challenger brand entry doors. Well my Challenger brand it's not going to actually fit so let me show you why. So unfortunately this isn't tall enough to go around this and make everything flush here. If I measure this distance here on this hinge you can see there where it bottoms out my existing one is taller so unfortunately if I put this flush this isn't flush if I try to force it I'm going to have these sticking up let me show you another angle here's a top view and you can kind of see there's a gap there because if I put this flush and these stick up so they're going to be away from the door and not sit properly and then when you close the door there probably won't be enough clearance so I could repair that I'd have to notch out my door here which I really don't want to do so I'm just not going to install it I think Challenger doors actually have a friction hinge as well but normally what you a person would do say they had a lipper door or a Challenger door that was compatible they would uh, measure between the existing hinges this hinge and this hinge they'd find the center port part and they'd install it right there the thing comes with a bunch of screws so you would mark everything out and then you would just i guess you would screw it in you could drill a couple extra holes here and place the one in the bottom and then one up in the top there yeah they give you this big bag of self-tapping screws so pretty straightforward and simple project to uh, upgrade a door with but since I can't do it with my door I thought you know me I'm gonna take this thing apart and see exactly how this friction hinge works seems to be a very uh, popular topic people having problems with them I see there's some force required to move that middle hinge on both sides they seem to have these ones locked in with pins. So I don't know what goes on in there. I think I'm going to bend that off so we can get one of those hinges off and then we can see what what happens. I find a lot of people on the forums, they get so stiff or they don't like them so they actually start to lubricate them. These little caps pop off the end, plastic caps, and people try to get all sorts of different lubes in there dry lubes and stuff like that. 
I think if I was lubricating it, I'd probably pick something like a, a bow shield that's uh, not an oil based, but a kind of a wool wax based so that it wouldn't uh, draw dirt because that would just make it worse. Also, I've had people in uh, very wet conditions tell me they have a lot of problems with these as they get to a lot of, a lot of moisture and water in them. Anyway, let's try to pull one of those hinges off if I can. Well, I'll say one thing for the thing, it's super tough. <laughs> it took quite a bit of different encouragements to get it apart. Anyway, I got it apart and you can see here there's no dimples or anything abnormal. That's the shaft that goes right through it. Like I say, it's held in place by those pins. And I have seen cases where those pins have backed out and caused problems. Inside the thing itself, I don't see anything abnormal in there. There's no dimples or ridges or anything. So I guess it's just a matter of how much force they press fit it with. One thing I did notice is it seemed to have some type of a graphite lubrication in here. You can see the black on the Q-tip goes on the shaft in there. So Anyway, that's all there is to it. There's not a lot of adjustment or anything you can do. So either it's going to be tight or loose or whatever it's going to end up being. So that's how that's put together. Looks like it's just uh, pressed in there at a certain tension and that's it. No adjustments or anything like that. Now keep in mind this this is an aftermarket one that I'm looking at. I don't know exactly how the OEM ones and there may be different models and variations of this but yeah that's all that looks like is a press fit. Maybe a little bit of graphite, graphite kind of grease in there. Let's do a quick measurement for you guys in case you're wondering about your Challenger door. Let's find here. It's kind of hard to see. It's kind of, I'd say a hair under three quarters of an inch. Whereas the existing hinges on my Challenger are a little bit over three quarters of an inch. Getting towards seven eighths. So, there's at least about a one-eighth of an inch difference between the two. Well, I guess I'll be sticking with the old school way of holding your door open. A little plastic catch screwed to the side of the wall. Anyway, if you have any feedback on this, if you've used them, whether you love them, hate them, had problems with them, how you've maybe fixed any problems, just uh, Leave them in the comments. I'm sure others would uh, like to know about it. They seem to be putting them OEM on a lot of trailers these days. I'm sure Lippard would like the feedback on it. Till next time, Ray from loveyourv.com. Thanks for watching, folks. Really appreciate it. Cheers, guys.